Hi, you guys. Welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson. And in this video, we're going to talk about some more animal symbols. But this time, we are going to zone in on the crow, rabbit, vulture, and the raccoon. And I'm going to tell you how these animal omens have showed up in my own life. So stay tuned. If you've been watching my channel for any time now, you know that I love to teach you guys all about the language of the mind. And the language of the mind is a language of symbols. Now, when you know this language of symbols, then you can begin to interpret your dreams or read tarot cards, or you can simply understand your life from a more metaphysical perspective, or even just a much deeper perspective than if you do not understand what all of these different images could be relaying to you from a more spiritual perspective. In my last video where I talked to you guys about animal symbols, I actually told you guys all about how to interpret, you know, symbols such as animals in your dream time. So that video was called Animals as Omens and Dream Symbols. So if you haven't watched that video yet, be sure to check it out because that video has some more information for you over there as well. And of course, the more that you practice and learn about symbology, the more you will understand this new language of mind. So similar to learning a new language, just a normal verbal language, you have to repeat things over and over again until those things become familiar or second nature to you. So that's kind of what I'm doing here in this video with the animal symbols. So remember, anytime that you're looking at symbols such as dream symbols, or if you're looking at something in your life as an omen, then you must also look beneath the surface of what you're seeing. And you need to really look at the form and function of the image that's being presented to you in order to really understand what your subconscious inner levels of mind are trying to say to your conscious waking mind. I hope that makes sense. If not, go check that video out. And you can also check out more of my videos all about dream interpretation. Anyone who has purchased a new car knows what I mean, that as soon as the object, such as a new car, enters your perception, all of a sudden you start seeing that exact make and model of car everywhere. You may have never noticed that particular car in the past, but as soon as that car enters your perception, all of a sudden, everybody's driving that car. Am I right? Have you guys experienced that before? If you have, let me know in the comments down below so I know I'm not crazy. But I've definitely experienced that on so many different occasions. So it's no different when it comes to animal symbols. Because shortly after I made my last video about animals as omens and dream symbols, I obviously had my focused attention more on the symbolism of animals in my life. And of course, because of that, I began to see different animals in my life having different experiences that actually made me stop and go, huh, that could have been an omen. So I wanted to share those couple of experiences with you guys here in hopes that it will help you to expand your consciousness around symbolism, specifically animal symbolism, and how you can use animal omens in your life to kind of understand 
the energies of your life experience. The first animal omen experience that I want to share with you guys included seeing a crow, two crows, and two rabbits. So, of course, I'm going to read about this out of my journal for you guys um, so I can just give you the entire story as I recorded it. So, it says here, on June 4th, Neil and I were sitting on the deck. When two crows in the neighbor's yard grabbed a guard attention. and the other attacked something. I was intrigued, and so I got my phone out to record this incident. Then Neil and I noticed a little baby rabbit frozen in fear who was watching the attack. And so now we believe that the crows actually were attacking a baby rabbit. So in that particular, um, in that particular animal omen, I saw two crows that caught my attention in my neighbor's yard. I'm just kind of giving you guys a recap. And so we saw this little scuffle going on between the crow and something. We weren't quite sure. But the more we looked, um, we noticed a tiny, tiny baby rabbit standing um, off to the side right next to a tree. And that baby rabbit was just kind of watching this whole thing go down. That's when Neil and I noticed and realized that one of the crows actually caught a baby rabbit and was in the process of eating it. So the other rabbit is just frozen in fear, like watching. Anyway, this was intriguing to me and it was a little disturbing. Animals can be at times disturbing. And so, um, Obviously, it made me sit and think, huh? I feel like I saw that for a reason. Like, this is something I should look into. So, I started thinking about the crow and the rabbit and crow eating the rabbit. And what could this possibly mean to me? All right. So, as we know, animals would represent your, your conscious, habitual thinking, your habits, and habitual thoughts and attitudes in your life. And then the specific animal can give you even more insight into that. So the crow, as far as I can tell, is just all about bringing out illusion. The crow is black like a shadow and a very curious animal. The crow is known to represent magic, such as you know, being able to create whatever, whatever it is that you want in the world. But this magic is not worldly magic. It's more like spiritual. So the crow is really all about kind of bringing heaven and earth together. Um, as crow, the, I guess you could say the omen regarding the crow is all about revealing what is real and what is illusion. Now, the more I thought about the rabbit, we all know that rabbits are very skittish. They are afraid of everything. The reason why you usually either see a rabbit um, sitting completely still like a statue or running for its life is because those are both of the things that they do to protect themselves from all the fear that is constantly plaguing poor little rabbit. So in this animal omen, I decided that the baby rabbit might recognize some of my own um, unrealized fears, inner fears. And I say unrealized because it was a baby rabbit. It was not a full grown rabbit. So this rabbit lacked maturity. This rabbit lacked probably a lot of different realizations that it could have gained if it was able to live longer than it did. So this particular animal message was really bringing my attention to myself, my shadow through the crow, and my fears that are probably stemming from illusion, okay? And so I really kind of saw this as, excuse me, a positive omen because I saw it almost as a part of me that can understand truth and illusion is actually, you know, killing this fear inside of me, this unactualized or unrealized fear. 
um, that is, you know, possibly living within my habitual thoughts and attitudes. But obviously there is a change taking place because of the death that is taking place. And that change is taking place in these habitual fears that may have been taking place inside of my thinking. Now, I hope that that makes sense without going too deep into the story behind how I came to this conclusion. Because that part, I mean, it's a whole nother video in itself. So the first animal omen that I shared with you happened on June 4th, and then this one happened on the evening of June 6th. So my husband and I were driving downtown on our way to a wedding reception, and that is when I saw this animal omen that I'm going to read about in here. Neil and I were driving through the neighborhood on our way to a wedding reception downtown. As we were stopped at a stop sign, I looked to my left and there was a large bird standing there. And for a split second, I thought it was a statue, but then it took a step. That's when I noticed the dead raccoon it was walking around. The big bird ended up to be a vulture and I had never actually seen one up close like that before. I was driving, so I didn't get a video of this one, but it was definitely cool to see, and it was definitely an omen, in my opinion. My first impression of this omen was like a purification of my shadow was taking place. This omen was confirmation of that, the vulture representing purification and release, and the masked raccoon is my own shadow. It had died and the vulture was there to clean up the mess that the death had left behind. But without the vulture's purification, the death and decay would remain. So the purification of the vulture allows new life to take place where the old once was. So that omen as well seems a little dark, just like the first one, again, because it involves death decay. I've literally never seen an, a vulture before, so it was so cool to find out that that's the huge bird that I saw standing there. Um, I felt really bad when I saw the cute little raccoon just laying there dead, but I recognized right away, well, that raccoon, he wears a mask. And that raccoon, he only works at night. So under the guise of darkness as well. So raccoon would definitely represent something in the shadow self, right? In my opinion. And uh, again, like I said in my journal, the vulture is all about purification. So there's a part of my shadow that has died or has changed form uh, in some way. And the vulture is representing this purification of myself that's taking place because of this big change in my own shadow. Now. This all sounds very obscure, I know, because it's my own experience, but leading up to this, there's been so much change in my life. I've been considering so many different changes. With all of that change, I've also started to realize that so many of my relationships have also changed. Now, all of this outer change is a clear representation of inner changes that are going on inside of myself as well of course, uh, because we are only here to experience life from our very own perspective, right? So all of these changes are alerting me to changes also in myself. So the rabbit and the crow with the death of fears um, and just kind of understanding that fear is an illusion. And then I had the vulture and the raccoon showing me that sometimes we have to be okay with ourselves dying a little bit, pieces of ourselves dying, because without pieces of ourselves dying, we cannot release that, purge it, and purify ourselves to then grow into the new being that we are meant to be, or the better person that we want to grow into. Now, I hope that makes sense for all of you guys because it definitely made sense for me, 
But again, it was my life experience that these animal omens were reflecting back to me. But I hope that this video at least helps you guys to get a little bit deeper of an understanding of how all of this symbolism works and how you can apply the symbolism inside of these animal omens into your own life. So how in your life have you been recognizing your own inner fear and then changing that fear? And how have you also recognized that bringing purification to your inner darkest places is causing the greatest change? Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I am inviting you now to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then click that bell to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.